Spellers, this is your lesson for Unit 4, Week 5 on spelling. We have some tricky, tricky words this, this week, so I wanted to kind of go over with you um, a little bit of information about them. This week, we have the suffixes A-N-C-E and E-N-C-E, and it gets a little bit confusing about which one you should use when you are spelling these words. The short answer is there's really no one rule for using A-N-C-E or E-N-C-E. So it's going to be important that you spend time working on spelling these words, practicing them at home, and practicing them when you have a moment or two at school because they can sneak up on you. So don't wait until Thursday night to do this. So you might want to spend a little bit of time sorting your words into those two groups of either they end with ants or ants. That would be my suggestion to you as you work to spell these accurately in your writing as well as on your weekly test. So exactly what do these two suffixes mean? Well, both of them mean the exact same thing. That's why it's even more tricky that they have the exact same meaning, which means that you're making um, a word that has the quality of or the state of. Most of these words that end with ants or ents are usually nouns. That's usually, not always. There's going to be a couple on your list that are not nouns, and you'll be able to tell which ones they are because they are verbs for the most part. So there's no one rule that governs whether a word ends with A-N-C-E or E-N-C-E. You have to learn to sort those two things out and spend some time mem memorizing those words. So what do we know? Well, we know that words that end with these suffixes are most likely nouns. We just learned that. And usually before the suffix ants or ents got added to a root word, the root word was usually a verb. Now that's not always the case, but in most of the words that you have on your spelling list, that's exactly what happened. So you can spend some time thinking about the spelling of the root word and then have them sorted in your brain about which is the ants set or the ents set. So if we take a look at some examples of what we're talking about here with a verb getting the E-N-C-E or the A-N-C added to it changes the meaning. So let's take a look at the word dependence. And if we split that out, the root word depend usually is a verb. When we depend upon someone, it means we rely upon them or whatever. But then dependence becomes a noun actually because if you are depending on someone, you have a dependence upon them. So you depend upon your parents, you have a dependence upon your parents. So see how quickly that changes from verb to noun? How about this one? Clear plus ants equals clearance. And if we clear something out, it means that we're going to put it away or sell it all off or get rid of it. So when we have a clearance sale, that's the type of sale where we're going to get rid of things. So we went from verb, which to means to move, to an event that would move things. So it is a noun here. The word reference comes from refer and ents added to it. So it's easy to see that refer means that you're going to go back and check on something or to note that you used that piece of information in um, some project that you're working on. So we refer to it, that's our verb, but if we actually post it into our presentation, it's a reference. Or if we use a book, we go back and refer in the book and we use the book as a reference. And then our last one here, the verb reside plus E-N-C-E, -E, and you notice that we're going to drop one of those E-N's, the E's in there. You don't need to. Reside means to live somewhere or to be somewhere. And then your residence 
is the place well is actually the place where you reside so that's how you can tell that this is now a noun but sadly some of our words that we have this week do not change a word from a verb to a noun what i noticed uh, but it's not necessarily a rule. I just noticed it on this list specifically that words that do not change from a verb to a noun on our list this week seem to end with ants more often than ants. So if you want to use that for um, your thoughts as you go along this week to study, that might be helpful. So let's take a look at some examples of that. Dance, it doesn't start out as a, it is a verb or a noun, it could be both. Uh, glance, same thing. Notice it ends with that A and C. -E. It could be a verb, like you glance over your shoulder, or it could be a noun as well. Like I could give your paper a glance when you ask me to proofread it. Then we have distance. Again, really doesn't have, it kind of has a root word in there of distant, and then changing it to CE only. It could be, but distant can also be a noun or a verb, and so can distance, because you can go um, a distance away from your home, or you can distance yourself from something that you don't like. Romance, again, same kind of thing. It could be a noun or a verb, you can have a romance with someone or you can romance someone that you like later on in life. All right, so what have we learned from these words? Well, we learned that English is not easy, of course, and that there may not be a rule to help you remember which ending goes with a word, but you can understand the meaning of the word if you look at the root word on most of these. And the other thing we learned is that you will most likely have to spend more time memorizing the endings more than the actual root words themselves. So spend some time with these words this week, kiddos. You're going to want to um, just so that you have a better understanding of them. So again, I would highly suggest that you sort them into two piles, one that ends with A-N-C-E and ones that end with E-N-C-E. And then that way you can spend time remembering that piece so that when it comes time to take your test or if you're going to actually use these in a sentence, you'll be able to tell which one is which. So I hope this helped you. And um, if you have questions, make sure that you ask your teacher. Have a great day.